Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by Offset. He's a Grammy-nominated, platinum-selling artist. You know, as one-third of Migos and good news for Offset fans. His highly anticipated, often teased, debut solo project is on the way. Offset, welcome to the show. Offset! Woo! Woo! Let's do it. So you're from Atlanta, where the chicken wing is king. Do you order them spicy? Do you crank it? I usually go, uh, mild lemon pepper. Hot lemon pepper be a little too hot. It's kind of, you know, sometimes too much heat take away the, the, the taste. Well, Offset, we're going to test you today, my man. Eee! <laughs> Let's go. Are you just going in? Uh-huh. Just, just, just go in. I can tolerate that. That's cool, right? That's like mild. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right in your wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. So you made headlines last month for walking in Paris Fashion Week in this massive, oversized, off-white puffer coat. Did you do anything yeah. to prepare for that, or did you just throw on clothes and take a lap? Like, did you practice your walk or anything? I didn't even, um, no, I didn't practice my walk, but, you know, I already got it in me. And I always wanted to be a part of that. I did it before in New York with Jeremy Scott. Jeremy Scott, yep. So I was familiar with this walk in, keep it straight face, keep it serious, keep it professional. Not to play around because they don't play around with their stuff. Uh, Virgil told me the way I need to go, and I went, and I, and, I, and I did my thing. On the topic of fashion, what's the backstory on your Freakazoid piece? Because that's a very niche cartoon to be inspired by. Freakazoid, I used to watch Freakazoid when I was young, and I just wanted to get a character that people were not always familiar of. You got to really know your cartoons about Freakazoid, so I just wanted to be, get a standout piece. <clears throat> yes, sir. And then finally, what's your, uh, what's your favorite piece of jewelry you're wearing right now? Um, right now, my favorite A lot to jewelry. choose from. It's probably my watch. It's, it's an Audemars Piguet with Piguet diamonds around it, all the way around, factory. Um, yeah, that's my favorite piece right now. What's, I got, re I got what's retail on that? It costs a lot. <laughs> Sometimes you don't put all your business out. <laughs> dippy dippy green out of Vermont, let's go. So despite all the lyrics about Patek watches and flying private, you get a lot of credit behind the scenes for your business savvy. In fact, the New York Times described you as being obsessed with music industry data watching. Do you think that studying analytics makes it easier for you to spot trends? Like what's the information that you're interested in? The numbers match up to what you are. So your, your, your worth go by your numbers. The lower your numbers, the lower your worth. That's just how it is. So as an artist, you know, with so many other artists, you can get lost in your mind thinking you somewhere else. Like, I'm this good and I'm big, ah. Uh. In actuality, your numbers might not match, so I just be wanting to have my numbers to match. You gotta make sure your math checks out, because then you'll be in denial. You won't know what your numbers are. You gotta know what your numbers are to better them. You know, when John Mayer was on the show, he talked through chord progressions that drive some of the biggest pop songs. And I'm curious, do you see any patterns in what makes a rap hit? Yeah, it's the Migo flow. See, <laughs> if you haven't noticed, every song that come out, you I've need noticed. It. You need noticed. it. It's like it's like life support. It's like without it, you can't. It seems like to me, like without it, at one point in your career as an artist, you're gonna use that flow. And with hip hop being the biggest genre, sometimes these pop artists and these country artists come in and then they don't really know how to rap, so they use that, but still harmonize on top of it. So I feel like that's like the most effective in all genres. And then getting back to business. What are some of the dumbest things young artists can do with their first big bag? Of course, buying jewelry and buying cars because, you know, sometimes when you come from, when you don't, when you don't have things, you know, you want the material things as an artist. But sometimes it can be an investment too, but you can go overboard because sometimes the look gets you more. But you gotta buy a house first and, and, and put your mama, get your mama right and make sure your foundation is set before you blow the bag. Patio's Potion. Denver, let's go Denver. Let's see what, what, what we're doing. Going in. It's got a little sting to it. <laughs> One of our favorite things to do is unpackage the close relationship between professional wrestling and hip hop. So I'm curious, what was your reaction when you heard that Ric Flair walked down the aisle to Ric Flair drip at his wedding last year? First he hit me and told me. Yeah? <laughs> I'm like, dang, man. 
I'm like, he's seriously finna walk his marriage, listen to a rap song. It's like a special moment. You know, usually it's like a love song. It's like a time of love. But when I seen him, it like I seen it in his walk, how he was just, he was lit. He was just happy to be. And then for me, me to him, he told me it was one of the best things that ever happened to him because he was like, he was going through a little health issues. And he was like, that just gave him more drive and more drive and more drive. And that was inspirational to me because that's, you look up to Ric Flair. Ric Flair was the first one with these, with these Rolexes and these jets. He was the first one that I seen talk about that stuff. So when he was the best, let you know he's the best, Ric Flair is never gonna wrestle like Ric Flair. Woo! Cheaper gold, okay. It's gonna get a little spicy, huh? Filling it out. Woo! It's a little hot. A little stingy dingy. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge amount of anticipation for the new album, and from what's been reported, it seems like the thing that separates it from your work with Migos is the degree to which you open up about your personal life. Now, I'm not here to dig anything up, but I am curious. T.I. went on a little rant on his last album about how trap music needs to be about all aspects of a trapper's life, including falling in love and going on vacation. Is that real or is that soft? No, it's real. It's not no such thing as soft. We grown men, so it's like, it's real life situations and we also are humans at the same time. So a lot of people try to cover that up. And then I, I can see why, because you got to protect it because you're famous, everything is, is public, but it's okay to show a vulnerable side as a man. It's like, it's really, it's really, a great thing to do as a man because most men run from it. So I feel like you're a stronger man when you do that, period, instead of holding back because you're just holding back your feelings. And that's not true. We all got feelings. I don't care how tough you're supposed to be. Los Calientes. Where this from? We make this one, actually. Ah, uh, okay. A little stare down. I think I'm I think I'm doing pretty good. What number? One, two, three, three four, five, yeah. halfway through. Ah. All right, Offset, we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. So I'll bust out the laptop, I'll show you the picture, and you just tell me the bigger story. Does that sound good? Yes, sir. Let's do it. All right, laptop, please. My nose running a little bit. Nice form, Bill. Thanks, so much, Kevin. Just up. First things first, how'd your chain end up on Coach Harbaugh? <laughs> we visit the players. He's like, I like your jersey, I like your eyes, it's icy. So we end up putting uh, Quavo and Take, I put on a chain and piece, and I gave him, and I put the uh, Ice Style Rolex on him, and he just sat back. You know, you know, that's, that's a legend right there. You see how he took the picture, just calm and collected, like he just knew what was going on? He's got the sauce. Yes, sir. The Whitney uh, Houston that's, throwback. That's classic throwback right there. I was actually in her video. That's actually the video. We had to wear suits, dressed down. She took a picture with us. Which one is you? I'm right here in the all gray, standing out with the hat on. Yeah. Dripped out from the side. As you can see, since a young one, I was probably like eight or nine right there. Been having drip. Yes, sir. This right here is a part of my book. It's like the history. Like, I do this. It's like that stamp line. Yeah, I do this. I've been entertaining since a child. Mike. All right, Mike, man, he was a cool dude. Took us to the back and showed him. He got a crazy pigeon coop. He loves pigeon, and then you can walk in there, it's like five, six rooms, it's like, it's crazy. It's like, I think he said it's like 200 or 300 <laughs> pigeons. His house was beautiful, and he was just giving us real stories on, you know what I'm saying, what you should do with your money. Don't mess up all your 20s, all your 30s. He was just giving OG game, telling us to watch out for this and to do this and make sure you be the best at what you do. That's Ellen. The first time we ever did Ellen, um, I have an interesting story about Ellen. Shout out to Ellen. When I came to the show, I was supposed to go to a dealership right after to go get the Bentley truck. The Bentley truck had just released. When she came back there, she's like, why you got all this money? I'm like, I'm trying to buy a Bentley truck. She's like, at the show? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, nah. She's like, well, I got somebody at Bentley. And she referred to Bentley and it pulled up. And when it pulled, <laughs> after the show, it pulled up. I just went to the office and handled the business and I paid for it. So shout out to Ellen, she got me the Bentley truck. She's the Bentley plug. She's the plug. Just like that. I thought she was playing too. She she was serious. And she got the least money in the picture and got the most money. <laughs> That's what I like about that. Ha -ha. She's holding up 40 bucks and... Yeah, she's loaded. <laughs> shout out to Ellen. You know it's a trick to eating hot food? Hmm. Swallow it. <laughs> Get it out of there. Let's go. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
I don't know if that. I works. like this one though. It got like a sweet. It's kind of sweet. It got like a little sweet sauce to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, little island vibe. So when we had your label mate Lil Yachty on the show, we had a deep conversation about his love for pizza, which I'm told is rivaled only by your love for breakfast cereal. Is it true that you keep as many as 50 boxes in the pantry at any given time? Yeah. See, what happened is the reason why I have so many now is because some, for some reason, they just start making exotic like new flavors of 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 like you ever had the cinnamon toast crunch apple? No. Ah, uh, strawberry cinnamon toast crunch strawberry. Then they got they got they got Lucky Charms with nothing but the marshmallows now. It's just like they just stepped the bar up. So it's like I collect them because I know it's gonna. Cause they told me it's limited, so <laughs> I get like five boxes, eat four, keep one, just in case. Yeah, well, you know, this cereal debate rages endlessly on the internet. So now that we have the most credentialed cereal connoisseur in hip hop in front of us, can you break it down the top three cereals of all time? Top three cereals of all time. Ooh, that's Fruity Pebbles. Number one. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Number two. Fruit Loops. I think they just the top most popular. Classics, classics. classics. And then you know, uh, Migos had its own flavor of potato chips for a while, sour cream with a dab of ranch. Have you given any thought to what the Offset cereal might be? Offset, drip O's. It'll come as a drip, but it'll have an O in there with a little money sign in it. Offset drip O's. Yes sir, all green and white. And then on the topic of breakfast, did you know that there are over 150 Waffle House locations in the Atlanta area alone? Yeah, I'm familiar. I've been to probably all of them. <laughs> and the chain gets name checked by everyone from Jay Z to Future to Migos. Why is hip hop so obsessed with Waffle House? It's just a late night breakfast joint. Two, three in the morning, you pull up fresh off the skillet. It's not like fast food breakfast, but really I get the Texas milk with a waffle on the side, you know what I'm saying? Baked chicken and cheese with bacon on it. Go. Woo! I sense a change in your demeanor. Offset. Let's go. <laughs> what we doing? So there's a rich tradition of MCs rapping about their attorneys, but few are as closely publicly connected as you and your lawyer. What can you tell the people about hashtag billion dollar lawyer? You get the business done. I can barely talk. Woo! You get the business done, he gonna, he gonna do his thing. He don't play. You know his law. <laughs> He keep me positive. He tells me to invest my money. He tells me to come to the house and eat dinner. Let me pull up, come over here. You see something on my Instagram that he's not sure about? He calls me, yo, what are you doing? I don't think you should do that. Ah. He's like, big brother. And he had a great quote in his New York Times profile where he said, if you can't hear that bad and bougie is a classic, try again. Do you think a lawyer needs to understand and listen to rap music in order to successfully rap hip hop artists? You gotta know your culture, you gotta be a part of it. You gotta be a part of it. If you're gonna represent something, you definitely have to know what it is about. Woo! Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Beyond insanity. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> How's that swallowing thing working out? dogs do on these days? Mm, mm. Four? Mm. Can you name check them all on the spot? Mm. Bando. Bentley. <sighs> Careful around your eyes.
Bentley, Vanda, Bougie Beard. How you doing, Offset? Okay. Find me, my man. Find me, my man. Because I just need you to focus right now. Because you're one. You've joined the proud fraternity of rap dog dads. And so, with that in mind, I have a little pop quiz for you. On one side of this sheet, there are five dogs. On the other side of this sheet, there are five rappers. I'd like for you to try to connect. Here's a pen. I'd like for you to try to connect the dog to the rapper dad, and you have 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. All right, let's check your work. I should have ate my life, bro. Do you feel confident about your uh, results here? All right, we have C.J. Thornton going to Riff Raff. That's incorrect. C.J. Thornton, push a T. Vincent going to push a T, but Vincent is actually Wiz Khalifa's dog. We have Jody Husky going to Wiz Khalifa, but Jody Husky is actually Riff Raff's dog. Trappy, two chains, you got that one right, but then you put Clyde with currency. And you got that right, so two for five. So this one is Hellfire, Fear This. <laughs> Are you cold? I don't know. Throwing the towel. That's all awesome. set. <laughs> throwing in the towel. Throwing in the towel. Mm. It's a great effort. It's a great effort. Yeah. Woo! Let me let me be your corner man for just a second, offset. Okay. Here's the thing. I know, it's back against ah! the ropes. It's back against the ropes, and you've taken some big punches here. But I see this spirit in you. Bro, this is hot as fuck. Yeah. Excuse me. Salute! I can't be no, you know what I'm saying? So internet trends can sometimes spread like a wildfire for no real reason, and you have unique perspective on that as someone whose group is credited with inspiring the dab. When did the dab die and who killed it? The dab never dies, because if you check every game right now in 2019, they still uh, dabbing. Never die. You know everything we do never, it's the last forever trends. See and the then, waves, I'll tell you one thing, see everybody say the waves, see the waves go away. Adjust it to the wind, the trends always it go and then come back. See the baggy clothes I just left Paris week? It's back in. Trend. And then your confrontation with Joe Budden at last year's BET Awards was maybe the most memed moment in pop culture for the whole year. Hey man, you guys are nominated tonight. Have a good show. What are you trying to do? Wait, 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 wait. Is that something that you can look back on now and laugh at? It was, I laughed at it after. It was never, it was never like, ah, it was never that serious, you know? I laughed at it after. <laughs> I'm taking this serious, okay. The funny part of it is the background characters. You know, you have Julio Jones, you have Pierre Thomas. Did you see the girl who cranks her head up like that? Yeah. That's our booker, Kristen. She actually works on this show. Oh, shout out Kristen. She's there for a uh, <laughs> legendary event.
You don't have to if you don't want to. No, I'm sure. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, offset, 10 chicken wings up, 10 chicken wings down, back against the ropes and still able to fight on top of it. The Migos ad libs, the dictionary is so robust that at this point it could be an international language. Now that the brain is on fire, tongue ablaze, I'm gonna ask you a series of questions. And I want you to respond in just ad libs. All right, let's go. Okay, which ad lib would you use to describe your new album? Ooh, huh. Define your expectations for 2019 in a single ad lib. Yeah. What ad lib would you give the classic? The bomb. <sighs> the last dab. <sighs> and let me introduce humbly an ad lib, and you tell me if it has legs. Hot ones. Woo, woo. <laughs> well, look at you, Offset, clearing the board. I know there was a time where your back was against the ropes. You didn't think you could, but you did it. Peace. Now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you, my friend. This camera, this camera, this camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. Yes, sir. It's boy Offset, one third Amigos. I will be dropping an album very soon. It's going to be, I think, one of the best albums of 2019. I need a Grammy off this album. Yes, sir. I've been hard working. Let's get it. You know, like we have I want to smell it. Can I open it? Yeah, yeah. It's yours to keep if you want it. <coughs> Sniff at your own risk. Oh my God. The bomb. Hey, what's going on, Hot Ones fans? This is Sean Evans checking in to say thank you so much for watching today's episode, and I have a very exciting hot sauce news update. If you sign up for the monthly subscription box in March, you will get, boom, a bottle of the classic. Boom, a bottle of Los Calientes, and double boom, the elusive Scorpion edition of The Last Dab is back in stock and available first to Hot Ones monthly subscription box subscribers. And this is the best part. We're slashing prices. Everything must go. Instead of the usual $40, $30 for this all-star trio of Hot Ones hot sauces, heatness.com for all your Hot Ones hot sauce needs. Who appreciates you, baby? I do.